Hello, this is Rocket Man Dan. Now today we're going to be going orbital and in the last episode we collected quite a nice haul of science from space. So first let's go and spend that science. We're going to need this to get into space. Okay, first things first, let's get some larger solid rocket fuel boosters and some engines and fuel tanks. We get the Reliant, the Thumper and the FLT 200 tank. So we're going to purchase that and also down here we've got some new science to get so we're going to get that as well there we go okay let's go to the launch pad and upgrade that because the craft we're going to be building will be bigger than 18 tons and this will get us a hundred and forty ton weight limit on the launch pad So there we go we've done that now into the VAB here we are, we're going to create our spaceworthy vessel. Right, let's get a command pod. There we go, tried and trusty Mark I command pod. We're going to put a parachute on that. Got a few new parachutes here, the drogue chutes and the radial parachutes. There we go, we're going to attach a couple of drogue chutes as well because we're going to have a little bit more mass. We're going to put these on in two times symmetry. There we go. Look at that. Perfect. Okay, and this extra mass we was talking about was this, the Science Junior. And it weighs quite a bit and it can only be used once, but it does net us quite a large amount of science points. We'll need a heat shield as well. There we go, the 1.25 metre heat shield. And it does weigh something, remember, we're at 1590 tonnes, well, 1 1.590 tonnes. We're going to reduce that to about 40. Let's see what one now. 1.43, that's great. Okay, we'll also want a decoupler. There we go. And see this top section here, that, that's the part that's going to be landing. Okay, I'm going up and down like this. I'm, using, I'm holding R2 and using the right analog stick, moving it forwards and backwards. There we go. So, okay, let's add some liquid fuel tanks. We've got two designs to choose from. We've got the FLT 100 tank. I've also got the FLT 200. It's basically the same as the FLT 100, but twice as big and twice as heavy. So, there we go, twice as much fuel as well. I think we'll use five of these today, but you, you can do it with four if you're feeling brave. We're copying by holding on a part and with square and pressing X at the same time. There we go, see? Also going to put a liquid fuel engine on it. We have two, the Reliant or the Swivel. The swivel has a gimbling engine, which means the bell cone at the bottom, just here, moves. So it gives us extra steering capabilities. There we go, we only want one of those, there we go. We're also going to add some solid rocket fuel boosters on the sides. Because we don't want to use this engine right as we start off, because we'll run out of fuel before we've even got into space. So we're going to go to coupling and get some radial decouplers want two of those we want to put them on just here nice and high not covering the science up going to get some solid rocket fuel boosters the thumpers great big ones there look massive we want to put those on the radial decouplers it's a bit tricky but just keep trying make sure they're on them properly just like that and they're a bit high at the moment so we're going to use the move tool and it's just up here in the top right there it is, the move tool. We're going to click on that. We're going to click on the part we want to select, which is the solid rocket fuel booster. And on the left analog stick, I'm just going to keep tapping left. See, and it goes down. I can't really tell much rhyme and reason to this. I'd much rather use the mouse clicker and drag those arrows, but we haven't got that option. Not on console anyway. And these, uh, a bit 
aerodynamically unstable. So what we're going to do, add some nose cones. There we go, beautiful. Now I still think the thrust might be a bit high on these. So we're going to bring the thrust down on these solid rocket fuel boosters. Or SRBs as I'll be calling them from now on. I'm going to press square. And I think we can reduce the thrust limiter to about, well, somewhere about there, 75. That sounds about right. It's a little bit tricky. It'd be a lot easier if you could just type in what you wanted. Uh, let's add some fins as well. Give us a bit of stability. Now, I'm going to use four times radial symmetry. But if I go over the piece that's already got two times radial symmetry, it'll change it again. See? See how it just went to two times? It's a known bug, it's been known about for quite a while on PC and console as well. So we're going to go on four times radial symmetry, make sure not to touch those side pieces. And we're just going to pop on these. Let's see, there we go, that's beautiful. Hopefully give us a little bit of stability once we get rid of these solid rocket fuel boosters. Or SRBs as I said I was going to call them. Let's add a little bit more science, just in case we land in a new biome. We might land in the desert, or in the grasslands, or the mountains. Who knows, but it might come in handy just to have a little bit more. There we go. And let's add a goo containment unit as well. It doesn't weigh that much. And if we tuck it up here, it won't get in the way either. Okay, I think we're about ready to press launch. There we go, launch. Okay, here we are at the launch pad, ready to take off. Nice new launch pad as well. Right then, uh, before we start, let's just go over things. We're wanting to get into orbit of Kerbin. And to do that, we need to be going sideways very fast, about 2300 meters per second. And to do that, we're going to launch and tilt over so by the time we hit about 10,000 meters we want to be about here about 45 degrees on the nav ball so let's get this start I'm going to turn SAS on and launch beautiful great thrust to weight there let's just get let's start to get turned over now it's going to be a bit tricky these SRBs don't have any gimbling or thrust control. If you look just to the left of the nav ball there, you can see my thruster up, down, or down up should I say. And we'll talk more about that once we're in space. We're going quite fast. Just going to try and hold it back a bit there because we're going very much over to the 45 degree marker before we've even got to 10,000 meters. But it looks like we're going to be fine. I'm going to decouple these soon and start the liquid fuel engine. There we go. That's not too bad. And start, see? Going lovely. And we're just going to go into the map view, zoom in here, press square on the apoapsis and we can see the height of it. We're just going to try and keep inside that prograde marker now. Even though we're not dead on the line there, just going to try and keep over and, and just keep bringing it over so it stretches out this path. See, it? See how it's stretching out? We're going to try and reach to about 85, I think. Cut thr thrust there. Lovely. It's just dropping just a little bit, but that's okay. We're, we're 15,000 meters out of the atmosphere still. So let's go back into this view. I'm going to physics warp up into space. You can't time warp in atmosphere, but you can physics warp. It's not as fast, but it does the, does the job as well. And there we go, we're in space. I'm just going to get this quick science reading before I have to start burning. See, I'm going to burn at my apoapsis, or just slightly before it, I'm going to burn right on the 90 degree marker, just here. 
just like this. That's about 85,000. I'm going to go into the map screen to do this. I'm going to press square on my apoapsis, square on my vessel. There we go, you can see I'm at 81,000. I'm going to bring that apoapsis out. So if you zoom out, I'm using L2 and R2 to zoom out whilst I've got the cursor on. And soon I'm going to be starting my burn. About now, I'd say. You'll see the apoapsis rising slightly as well, but that's okay. You can decrease the throttle slightly by holding L1 and down on the directional pad. See, see how the throttle's going down a bit? See, I can bring it all the way down to nearly nothing. It's still going, if you can tell, but I'm going to go for thr full throttle now. There we go, it's bringing it out. Let's just have a say. I want that periapsis to be coming out the other side of the planet. There it is. What height is that at? Oh, 67,000. I'm just going to wait until I reach that apoapsis again. So let's fast forward things. I want to get to the apoapsis. I'm just going to give it a little burn to bring that periapsis up. Because when you're in space, you don't affect where you are when you start your engines. You affect where you're going to be. And where we're going to be is hitting the atmosphere if we don't bring this up. Oh, that's gone to the retrograde side of things. Let's just see if we can just pop that up just above 70. There we go, see? Perfect. We've got plenty of fuel left as well. So much to get home. But now that's it. Now we can go home. So let's do that, eh? I'm going to fast forward a bit so I land in the water because this craft, this uh, science junior that we're using, hasn't got a very high impact tolerance. So if we land in the water it'll be a bit softer. And I also want to do it in the daylight so you at home can actually see what's going on. Right, I think about there we'll do fine. I'm going to flip the ship over to retrograde. I want to bring that periapsis down. Because we're only in LKO, low kerbin orbit, we can bring it down quite low because we're not going very fast. So there we go, we're going to do a little burn. Bring it right down. Oh, that'll do 2,000, that's fine, yeah. We don't want to do this if we're coming from the moon. Because we're only coming from here, it's fine. I'm going to release this pod as well. I'm I'm going to face radial in because I don't want this injection stage hitting us on the way down. There we go. Now I'm going to point retrograde again. Well, actually, let's just point a little bit too because when I fast forward now, it's going to tilt by itself. See? I'm going to hit the atmosphere soon. There we go, we're in atmosphere, time warp has stopped. And now in post-production, I think I'm just going to speed this up because we covered re-entry last time. What you want to do though, is stay in the retrograde marker, or you'll get the heat bars coming up and you may explode. You don't want that. So, once we've landed, we'll start talking again. You probably just heard that explode, just behind me. And there goes another one. Okay. I'll see you when we land. There we go. The drogue shoots are releasing just now. They fully deploy at two and a half thousand meters above ground level, which obviously is sea level at the moment. There's a shadow, great for landing. Helps you see how far away from the ground or water you are. This main chute should deploy at 1,000 meters. Let's go inside the cockpit just to have a see so before we splash down. I want to go over to the portrait, tap on view. 
And there we go, see? This is inside Jeb's little cockpit. There was the full chute deploying. And there, just there, that's the altimeter just there. And that tells us our radar altitude. See, we're, what would you say that is, about 700 meters above the ground? Now getting out of here can be a little bit tricky. It took me quite a while to figure it out. There's a surface speed look. But getting out of here, we're going to hold L1 and tap either left or right on the directional pad. There we go. I'm just going to fast forward this in just before we land. There we go. Coming down nice and slow. Hopefully this should survive an impact with the water. Yeah, it's coming down lovely. And that's getting orbital for you. It's not that difficult once you've mastered a few basics. There we go. Perfect. Nothing exploded. That's always a good sign. Now, I believe we've already got science from these areas. Because this is just classed as water. It doesn't matter what part of Kerbin you actually do the science from. I'll take it anyway. We'll go back to the Space Centre now. And great look, Jeb's earned himself a star. Beautiful. Okay then, that's it for this episode. In the next episode, we might be trying a flyby of the moon. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Leave a comment if you like, that would always help. Bye bye now, see you next time.